And I was always curious to the alternative options for healing because I grew up in a family where my parents owned a pharmacy and I knew how the pharma was always leading you to medications that gave you a side effect and another medication for that side effect. And I never believed in it. As a matter of fact, my dad never took medication. He always said, you know, flu goes away in seven days if you take medication or a week if you don't, right? And so even though he owned a pharmacy and served a community with, you know, diseases and reversing and helping him out with healing with medication, there are certain diseases that actually medication doesn't help you heal. It helps you manage. And diabetes is one of them. Welcome, everyone. It's Wednesday time for Health Biz and Politics. I'm Jim Graypeck, joined by my co-host, Charlie Froman. We have a good show for you today. If you are new, he will introduce the show. Let me do a little housekeeping, uh, share my screen so you can see our website. And uh, there it is. So you can find the information on our guest who's coming, the topics, etc at your-mp.com. MP is for Marketplace. And uh, go over to the Your Media Hub tab, and it'll bring you here. You will see Wednesday's show today, Health, Biz, and Politics, and Thursday, the Freedom Hub show. <laughs> Our guests, et cetera, a little bit about them, what the topics are upcoming, and then our media hub, uh, media hub wrong, our social media links, BitChute Brady on YouTube, which I think we'll make today, um, and Rumble, same thing with uh, Thursday show. So now that the housekeeping is done, and we have other good stuff here, Charlie might share some of that with you in terms of natural health solutions, ways to save money, cost sharing programs, etc., which are really good. Now let me stop the screen share and... Uh, <laughs> Turn it over to you, Charlie. Thanks, Jim. And now I will share a screen, uh, starting with the same page, uh, where again you could uh, learn learn about our guests each week. And I wanted to click uh, another tab here, your marketplace, because uh, the scrolling down a bit to our cash appointments app in this uh, transactions app. Uh, is a sharing plan that Jim uh, alluded to. And we like sharing because it creates cash patience and there's no networks, uh, which by the way, you need to realize, for, in my opinion, as a licensed health insurance agent is a fatal flaw of insurance. I mean, what, what good is insurance if you can't see the doctor you want for cancer or heart disease? There's no limits on sharing. You're a cash patient worldwide. Um, however, the problem with any kind of sharing insurance or third party is that in my experience, um, as I meet sicker and sicker people, cause you know, chronic disease now is affecting half the population up from 10% in the eighties. Now, why is that happening? You know, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is speaking a lot about the real epidemic chronic disease. And he mentions the EPA's report from 89 that that's when about it, it started and they don't know the causes, but it's probably a synergistic effect among a number of environmental insults that we don't have to discuss right now, but I think you guys know what some of them are. Um, but so we have a lot of sick enrollees who want help with their prescriptions. And we have a very robust concierge shopping department using world meds, delivering cheaper alternatives to your door, discount programs, uh, monthly discount pro, pro, uh, programs, and uh, et cetera. But for some medicines, like for some diabetes drugs, we can't really save you too much money except give you a tax write-off if you properly fund your health savings account. Um, so it's a mess. And indirectly, one of the nice things about sharing and creating cash patients is as you shop for saving money, you also inevitably learn alternatives. 
And as you do that, that's the magic sauce because now you're thinking outside the box. And anyone, anyone with chronic disease is going to eventually look at natural alter alternatives because you can't really find fixes from a pill. Um, and so we are very excited to have my fellow Kundalini yoga teacher, Natalia Shafini, to discuss reversing chronic disease uh, with natural treatments. Uh, she even may, you know, mention some yoga and meditation possibilities or Zoom workshops to learn more. But, you know, if half the country is afflicted with chronic disease and a good percentage of that with diabetes, I think we're going to want to think outside the box and learn from Natalia. Uh, what can we do to protect ourselves if the mainstream system is not? Uh, and with that, Natalia, take it away. Thank you so much, Charles, for inviting me today. It's an honor and a pleasure being here. And um, I want to share a little bit about how I came to do what I do. Um, my name is Natalia Cipini. I'm originally from Argentina, and I've been here for half of my life. When I came to America, I came to work in hotels. And soon after starting to work in hotels, I got a lot of joy from doing that. But I wanted to go into fitness and wellness. And so I transitioned into wellness and I became a yoga instructor, a personal trainer, a dance instructor. And later on, I became a hands-on healer, a Reiki master. And I was always curious to the alternative options for healing because I grew up in a family where my parents owned a pharmacy and I knew how the pharma was always leading you to medications that gave you a side effect and another medication for that side effect. And I never believed in it. As a matter of fact, my dad never took medication. He always said, you know, flu goes away in seven days if you take medication or a week if you don't, right? And so even though he owned a pharmacy and served a community with, you know, diseases and reversing and helping him out with healing with medication, mm -hmm. There are certain diseases that actually medication doesn't help you heal. It helps you manage. And diabetes is one of them. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to share a little bit about my journey after becoming a personal trainer. I work with people of all ages in the gym, losing weight, increasing flexibility, rehabilitation from injuries, uh, getting stronger um, alignment, sports performance, you know, anything that you um, can think of. I could help people of all ages and all backgrounds. But one of the areas where I had the most interest was weight loss because I personally had a challenge keeping with my ideal weight um, and losing weight if I gain weight. So many times in my life, I had to go through the process of losing 20 to 40 pounds and he started with a desire of playing sports and my coach challenging me saying, you know, either you lose the weight in the off season or you're out of the team. Basically it was a thread or a challenge post to lose about 30 pounds in about three months. I got it done. I did it many times in my life again because my tendency, if I don't watch, I tend to gain weight. And so that's one of the reasons why I became very passionate about helping women because I have my own share of struggles with weight gain and keeping up with nutrition and exercising enough, even though I love exercising consistently and watching what I eat and eating the right thing and exercising has always been a struggle. So for me, doing this for a living, it inspired me. I could inspire people, share my own you know, journey and how I overcame a lot of the challenges. One of my heaviest weights after becoming a mom and working in corporate America, very busy in management, multitasking with big responsibilities, I had about 45 pounds to lose. And my doctor had told me I needed to lose the weight, but I kept on postponing and procrastinating and setting it aside because other things were more important, right? The job, the, everything else that I had to do. Um, and so I did the routine blood exams that the doctor gives you every year, right? Blood exams, the typical exam. And when I got the results, the doctor told me, you're borderline diabetic. And it was a total surprise to me. It caught me completely off guard. I wasn't expecting it. I never thought I would be diabetic. Um, it sort of runs in my family. One aunt has always been borderline, but it's never been a diagnosed diagnosis per se and so the doctor challenged me at that time to lose weight and I managed to lose about 45 pounds in 2019 
uh, out of those 40 pounds, I kept most of it off. And when the pandemic hit in 2020, people got, you know, kind of overwhelmed being at home, a lot of food, uh, not exercising, not keeping up with the gym, personal training, whatever they did to exercise. And they started putting on pounds. So one of the biggest, you know, side effects of, of the COVID era was people gaining weight, getting out of shape, getting depressed, tending to food and, you know, looking for ways to get that instant gratification, which had them lose and um, gain a lot of weight. And so right after COVID started, I started a group where I taught women how to lose weight um, because of my journey of having lost the 45 pounds. And just a few months ago, in February of this year, after losing the weight, after taking care of myself, after keeping that weight off, I got the big red flag of the diagnosis again, pre-diabetic diagnosis confirmed for the first time. The other time was like borderline, borderline, kind of there's numbers that you go by. This time was, it was a confirmed pre-diabetes diagnose, diagnosis. And back in the day, they didn't pay attention to the pre-diabetes phase as much. But nowadays they're telling, hey, you know what? If you pay attention to the pre-diabetes range, which is 5.7 or above in your A1C level, if you know what that uh, that is for you, you can know that you're pre-diabetic uh, when you're above uh, 5.7. Uh, you're going to be in that range where you have a lot of chances to reverse it, to take care of yourself, and to eliminate the diagnosis. It doesn't mean that you heal yourself for life, because if you go back to the same things that you were doing when you got the diagnosis, most likely you're going to find yourself in the same exact position, right? But it is possible to put it in remission. And if you keep on doing what you learn in the process of reversing that diabetes, you're actually going to be able to keep diagnosis free for the rest of your life. Even if you were initially diagnosed, either pre-diabetic or diabetic type 2. So as you know, there's different kinds of diabetes. Diabetes type 1 is something that cannot be reversed. Um, you know, people need the insulin, they cannot live without, their pancreas doesn't create, you know, what they need, so they need the help of medication. In that case, there's not much we can do to reverse and to do anything to impact it, but there's also diabetes type 2. It's called insulin resistance, and you actually get diagnosed, and if you're able to put some behavioral modifications, lifestyle changes, that are, you know, long-term, you have a very, very high percentage of chances of being able to reverse it for most people. For some people, they might need the medication no matter what. So you have to really always consult with a doctor to check what your situation is, what your numbers are, what kind of diabetes you have. But my conversation today with everybody here will be mostly focused on pre-diabetes and diabetes type two, which is insulin resistance. And so, so far, we're good. You guys are keeping up. Let me know if you have questions or put them in the chat so I can address them when I finish a little bit of the journey and the uh, introduction of why I'm so passionate about this topic. So when you look at the tendencies and you know all the surveys that are being done, you notice that there is a really, really high percentage of people that are diabetic type 1 really high percentage of people that are diabetic type 2. And right now, there's an increase in number of pre-diabetic people. And so it's sad in many cases because people actually don't know that they are in that range of being already diagnosed. And in many cases, um, when I work with women, I realize that in many cases, women actually go to the doctor to get weight loss medication or some sort of other medication. And in order to get the medication, they need to do a blood exam, which actually shows them pre-diabetic in their blood, and therefore they cannot get the medication. And so it's a stop for them to get a weight loss medication, for example. If you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, they will not give you the prescription for weight loss medication. But more importantly, both weight loss and Diabetes, like type 2 and pre-diabetes, are things that we can actually impact greatly by changing our lifestyle. A lot of people want the quick fix, the easy pill, I take it, it fixes it, and it's done. The truth of the matter is if your lifestyle is poor and you have 
bad quality sleep or poor, you know, very little lit sleep at night and you're highly stressed and you have a lot going on and you eat very poorly, this is going to come back. So chronic disease is just giving us a hint. There's something out of alignment. We're not really taking care of ourselves. We're highly stressed. We're eating poorly. We're not sleeping enough or we're not sleeping properly. Even if we sleep many hours, sometimes you find that you wake up all the time through the night. Um, and so when you actually create a plan, a holistic plan that actually includes all the things you have, body, mind, and soul. This is a triangle that I always talk about, body, mind, and soul, the trilogy, right? That is actually a wholesome human being taking in consideration the three. So when you go to the doctor and they give you, hey, you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, they never address this with you. They never tell you there is a holistic option. There is things that you can do. And I highly encourage you to go that route first. They actually give you medication. They tell you eat right, whatever that means, and exercise. And that just opens up a can of worms because most people don't even know what eating right means. And so they don't know if they got to eat vegan, if they have to eat keto, if they have to go low carb, if they have to do the South Beach diet. What does eating right mean? So I found myself when I got diagnosed extremely overwhelmed, even as an expert in wellness, even as a wellness coach, even as somebody who guided many people when it comes to our own personal health and being officially diagnosed, it can be a very overwhelming process. And so in doing my own research and finding resources and seeking out holistic practitioners to support me, I realized there's a lot of misinformation. And the misinformation partially is from people that should not be sharing their information online, but a lot of it has to do with lies we've been fed that come from the last century. And I'm going to explain in just a brief second what I mean. If you were to look at the history of United States and nutrition, we actually been brainwashed to believe that fats were bad for us, that cause heart disease, that it puts you at risk. And therefore, around the 70s or 80s, there was a big, big campaign that said fat free, fat free, fat free. So people started saying, well, you know, fats are bad, so I'm going to do fat free. And a whole other set of problems started at that point, because every time that you had an ingredient uh, removed, then you have to put other ingredients to substitute or to increase the flavor. And so if you remove all the fat from the, the food and, you know, it has no flavor, what they decided to add is a, a lot of sugar. And so anytime you find a yogurt, cheese, whatever it is that says low fat, the first thing you want to do is turn around and look at the label because the carbohydrate content and the sugar content in the label is actually more detrimental than the fat itself. If you were to eat fat, proteins, and um, uh, fat from animal, you will not have as much damage as if you are vegan and you don't eat any animal products but you constantly eat carbohydrates and sugar. And that's quite a blunt statement to make, but it is true that meat, if eaten with organic and, you know, and normal amounts and balancing with other meals, is not gonna be so detrimental to your health as is sugar. But we were taught to believe that fat-free was good. So we were given all these options, fat-free, that were loaded with additional sugar, additional carbohydrates. And this is what I believe set the spiral, downward spiral on what is happening in society. People are used to eating uh, fat-free things. They don't understand how detrimental sugar is. And mostly they don't understand that sugar becomes an addiction that is really hard to break. And so when you spike your insulin, as a woman, especially we have hormones that are very, very impactful in our levels of energy in our levels of irritability, focus, and how we function, how we operate in our life. And so when you have insulin being pumped from eating sugar constantly, you eat sugar, it pumps insulin, it spikes up, you feel great, 
Then you crash 20 to 30 minutes later. Guess what? You crave it again in about an hour or so because you're going to be kind of burning through that sugar, bumping the insulin. The insulin is left in your body and you're actually going to be craving more sugar because now you have insulin that's in the body without a job to do. And that's the reason why you feel like a little kid at the cashier, you know, at the supermarket asking you for candy. I want candy. I want candy. Mommy, mommy, I want candy. You've seen it in the supermarket, right? Kids asking for candy because they're just got all this insulin in their body asking for more sugar to process. So we have to go the other way around. We have to stop consuming so much sugar. We have to take our health in our hands and educate ourselves to read a label, to understand, you know, how detrimental sugar is, to start understanding that carbohydrates is the same as sugar, because when you put it in your mouth and you consume it, the moment that you swallow it, it starts a chemical process to break down into sugar. And so carbohydrates is the same as eating sugar. And so if you don't understand that, what happens is you're caught in what I call the sugar cycle. You eat it, you feel great, then you crash, and then you feel very crummy, and then you crave it again. And you have that 3 p.m. slump, 11 a.m. slump, after dinner slump, that you just want something crunchy, something sweet, server car carbohydrates, something to munch on, and usually it's sugar for most people. And so we have to go the other way around. Stop consuming it. It takes about three days for us to stop craving it. Withdrawal effect and symptoms are very uncomfortable. But if you understand that going through the three days of not eating it, consuming it less and less to the point that you barely eat it, then the cravings dissipate. You take control of your health because you now can choose what you eat versus eating what your body's asking for, screaming for. Usually when you have a lot of insulin, in the body, in the blood, you constantly crave that sugar. Another thing to point out is there is kind of like a timeline and usually it starts with insulin resistance. Insulin resistance shows up preceding diabetes type two or pre-diabetes by about 10 years. In all my research, I understood that many times when they tell you, hey, you're insulin resistant, down the line, in a timeline, you're going to see pre-diabetic and diabetic type 2. And it all depends on how far do you need to go to get that red you know, flag that you need to change something about the way you take care of yourself. Because insulin resistance, you're going to start noticing your belly starts growing. You get thirsty. Uh, you have bad sleep most of the time. You get tired. So when you start sensing that is the signs that you're experiencing, you should start paying attention because diabetes is taking insulin resistance to the extreme. So when we get diagnosed pre-diabetic or diabetic type 2, what we now need to do is reverse that insulin resistance. So you need to become, once again, insulin sensitive. And that is, so it's, that's the process that we actually go through in order to reverse it. So it pretty much is depending on where you go in this timeline, you're going to find yourself insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, diabetic type two. And if you don't pay attention all along, it keeps on getting worse and worse. What I propose specifically is becoming very aware on how we feel, connecting with ourselves through mindfulness. Because when we tune in and we notice how we feel, we start paying attention to what we crave. We start noticing why is the reason that I crave sugar all the time? Is it because I don't have energy? Is it because I've been feeding my body sugar all the time? Is it because I'm lacking focus? Is it because I'm getting tired? Uh, and really start giving your body what it needs. Maybe you need a little more protein. Maybe you need a little bit more healthy fat. But if you start substituting the sugar for other ingredients, other sorts of foods, you're going to notice that you start craving it less and less. And that's where we want to go. Because when we eliminate the addiction, when we eliminate that screen for more sugar, then we can take a little bit more control. We can take time to prepare wholesome foods made at home from raw materials that are chosen to the best of our ability, organic if we have the chance. Um, and making it 
from, you know, the food count, from the counter of our kitchen, making it with our hands. A lot of people are very busy. So life has taken over and we actually let it. So we have to slow down, become mindfulness and take control of the way we eat and then become aware on what we need. We need more protein, increase that, healthy fats, increase that. And you have to start moving more. So nutrition, movement, and mindfulness basically is the whole thing that I do with people when they re want to reverse it. And it's across the board what people need to do for reversing a lot of these chronic uh, diseases. Yeah. So it's not just diabetes. People suffer from fibromyalgia, for example. Exercise is one of the best things that you can start doing. But it's contraintuitive because at the beginning you feel in so much pain that the last thing you want to do is exercise. But you go through that process of walking a little bit, increasing a little bit of movement, taking it nice and easy. And as you develop some strength, you're going to find the improvement in the condition. And it goes across the board with most of the diseases that are considered chronic. If you take control of your health, you start taking some supplements, you start eating uh, from raw ingredients, preparing your own food, go organic if you can, drinking good quality water, watching your sleep, all the things that you know that make sense we quote unquote should be doing, you start actually implementing it. Because from talking about it or knowing about it to actually doing something about it is a big gap. So actually start doing what we know to do versus knowing what we have to do and not doing it we actually have a big chance of being able to reverse it. Scientifically, it's known that in order to reverse diabetes, you need at least three months. And the reason being is the um, cells in your body need to regenerate. So when you go to the doctor and they give you the diagnosis, they tell you come back in three months. And in the process in between, most people are not sure what to do. They're lost, overwhelmed, discouraged, or, you know, it's just something that totally makes somebody more stressed out because they've been given the diagnosis. The doctor told you based on the exams, what is happening with you, but most people spinning wheels in the moment they get a diagnosis and they don't know where to go. So what I propose in the holistic approach is becoming more mindful and aware on your own body, connecting with yourself. Uh, slowing down, taking the time to prepare your own food, Choice choices are made from what you know to be good for you versus what is convenient. Sometimes putting something in the microwave for two, three minutes makes your dinner. That's not going to be the best kind of food. So it requires for us to focus on it. And it takes about three to four months to possibly be able to do that. So I take women specifically through that process and, uh, it really is a combination of those things that I said is mindfulness, nutrition, and increased movement, whatever sort of movement that they like to do, but it needs to be consistent. And that's kind of the part that is hard for most human beings, the consistency. It's hard for me, it's hard for most people. And so as a coach, what I help people with is going from knowing what they should be doing to doing what they know to do. For a long period of time, three months to begin with, they go through the process, they learn what they have to do. And I kind of coach them in the process of becoming accountable, self-correction, becoming aware, not beating themselves up when they do something wrong, but trying again week after week. Because left to our own devices as human beings, we're going to get complacent. We're going to go into procrastination and we're going to let things slide, thinking that they're going to go away. So most likely between checkup and checkup and uh, the doctor giving you the diagnosis until the next one, if you haven't done anything, most likely it's going to be the same or worse and you're destined to be put on medication. Because even as a pre-diabetic, when I got the call from the nurse, what they told me is eat right, whatever that means, <laughs> exercise, whatever choice of exercise. And if you come back in three months and you haven't improved it, we're going to give you medication. Usually they put people on metformin, which has an endless amount of side effects. Diarrhea being the, the biggest one that people have to deal with. 
And so it's very, very inconvenient. It has a lot of side effects. We don't want to go that route. And when people are taking the medication, I help them through the process to start eliminating the amount of medication they take. Because when you start controlling your own sugars, you need, you need less insulin. So the doctor starts kind of decreasing the amount of insulin that they give you. And that's the process that we re reverse it holistically. Eating right, exercising, being mindfulness, go hand in hand with the checkups with the doctor, your own checkups daily on where your sugars are, and being consistent, getting the support that you need, working in a community helps greatly because it's very isolating. Any kind of chronic disease that you have and deal with is isolating in nature. So getting in a group of people that are dealing with the condition that are needing the same kind of support and support you in return is highly beneficial. And uh, I did the checkup on, I started with the process of reversing my own pre-diabetes in March 10, and I got tested last Friday. On Monday, I got the results, and my numbers went from 5.8, which is technically pre-diabetic, to 5.3, which is non-diabetic. So I now prove my own little formula that it works because I just became a diabetes coach based on my own journey of overwhelm and kind of learning what I need to do. Um, and now I've proven that my formula works, that if you want to take your health in your hands and you want to stop taking medication unless you absolutely need it, and hand in hand with your doctor, you create a holistic plan where you get checkups every three months, you're actually able to reverse it. It might take you more than three months, depending on where you are, but it's totally possible. And I'm here to tell you, don't let doctors tell you you just need to take the medication because it's not reversible because there's some doctors that they've never been trained in nutrition. It's not that they have ill intent. They just don't know. They have not been trained in nutrition. They don't know what the best nutrition is. So you have to educate yourself, empower yourself, and really take your health in your hands. Making profound changes, behavior modification for long term, uh, you know, not just do it for three months, long term transform the way that you operate in your life and you can actually do it too so on saturday i have a class i'm going to do free of charge for people that want to join and i'll offer a education inspiration and answer a lot of questions that people have but i'm sure there's questions here so anything you would like for me to go over either charles or anybody in the audience thank you natalia i will uh we can open it up to questions. I see he does have his, Charles has his hands up, but actually let me, uh, a co quick comment or two. You were talking about our diets and the foods and the fats, and absolutely, I think certainly Charlie and I agree with you. Um, I just wanted to add also that seed oils, um, I was surprised, not surprised, well, so I was surprised because I've seen some of the literature and documentaries and, you know, we're told that, uh, Canola oil, that's another thing is good. And these other vegetable oils are better for the heart. And it turns out, of course, it's like the opposite, right? Causing more heart problems, more heart attacks. Um, yeah, healthy red meat, uh, if it's organic or grass-fed or properly raised and pastured, uh, the, the meats, the organ meats are really good for us. The animal fats are really good for us, again, if they're properly, you know, taking care of those, these animals are. Um, and so you're a, oh, and I, you mentioned metformin, that's the prescription? Metformin, yep. Metformin, metformin. is the most common uh, kind of medication that they give people within. Yeah, with... I would, because I just read, I just saw an article a few days ago uh, that mentioned that and not being a di in, in the world of diabetes, I wasn't sure what that was, but it came out and they said that this, they're finding, I think it was the, even the men that are taking it with, uh, in couples, it's causing birth defects. Yeah, I believe like, it. wow. And uh, and now that you're saying diabetes, yeah, it's got to be in like a millions of people are taking this, which is, uh, you know, obviously a problem. Um, okay, I'm going to put, well, I'll go to questions and then I've got a few other thoughts. Uh, Charles, your hand was up first, so go on. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Natalia, you mentioned the number three twice. Uh, one, to transition out of the cravings, three days, and then three months to, to really 
get better habits, I guess, to reverse your, di your diabetes on a longer term basis. Do you want to ex explain the difference there again, the three days versus, versus three months? Yeah, yeah. So when people want to lose weight and they come to me, they tell me I have no willpower. You know, I have a hard time staying away from sugar. At the beginning, when you want to stay away from sugar, it's really hard because it's highly addictive. They many times compare it with crack cocaine because it's really hard to stay away from sugar. And so people need to go through a process of three days of sort of a cleanse. And it's a physiological cleanse. Why? Because when you eat sugar, I said there is a response, a physiological response, which is the insulin will be pumped and insulin will take care of the sugar. But when the sugar is being dealt with, when it's eliminated from the system, if you pump too much insulin, it'll stay in your body. So you have to now kind of pump some of that insulin out and you have to kind of stop giving it sugar so it doesn't pump anymore. And it takes about three days to go through that process. So it basically is a determination that you kind of commit to yourself and say, you know what, for the next three days, I am not going to eat sugar. And, you know, maybe like a little kid that you say no more sugar, you tell yourself no more sugar. And to the extent that you can eliminate for a few days, little by little, to the point that you don't eat the bread in the morning, you don't eat the cereal, you don't eat the chocolate, you don't eat the chips, you don't eat all the things that we're so accustomed to eating on a regular basis that are not good for us. And you see what the body does, because after three days of not consuming it, the physiological response, your body's response will be that you don't crave it anymore. It's not going to be like a nagging sensation of like feeling like I need to have the sugar. It will be much more control. It dissipates. And it has to do with that insulin not now floating in your body like it was when you were eating constantly the sugar, spiking these levels of sugar. That's for the three days. After three days, you're going to notice a little bit of the dissipation of that craving, more sense of control, a little bit more slow in the reaction when you're hungry, being able to plan ahead, control a little bit of what you're going to eat versus putting the first thing you find in your mouth. So that's what I find with the three days of a cleanse. It's a physiological sugar cleanse and it helps you dissipate the craving. In regards to the three months, uh, what we were talking about is the cells need to be regenerated. And so it takes three months, up to four months in some cases, to regenerate the cells that have been damaged with the condition. And so you have to go through that process of letting your body heal itself. And you have to stop doing the damage as well. It's like a twofold thing. It's not going to be overnight. It takes some behavior modification, commitment, discipline, consistency to achieve it because you now need to stop spiking the sugar. If you don't stop spiking the, the sugar, your body will not be able to repair itself. The body has the ability to repair itself, but if you keep on doing the damage over and over, it's not going to happen. So stop doing the damage, stop doing what hurts the body, which is the sugar, for a period of three months so that you can let your body regenerate the cells, heal itself, stop doing the damage from consuming that extra sugar carbohydrates, and also doing things that remediate the damage as well. It is known that meditation, mindfulness is a healing practice. It's inside of the world of healing, ice, uh, healing arts, also price. And so it is a healing um, therapy, alternative healing therapy. I use it in my plans to help you know people to be able to reverse conditions, gain control of their body and their uh, health, as well as their own mind, to be able to feel more at peace, more at ease, more grounded, more centered. Um, but in that three month period, you have to stop spiking the sugar. So we stop the damage, we increase the exercise that helps your body operate more optimally. It's going to get stronger. It's going to heal itself. And in three months, then you can go for a checkup. Ideally, you can wait up to four months because that's proven to be the most that it could take. 
But the moment that you start the plan, if you were to check in two months, you most likely won't see the difference. So that is the three days to start cleansing the body from the sugar addiction, and then the three month process to reverse diabetes holistically, because if you keep on doing the same thing you were doing, it won't make a difference. Um, another thing I wanted to say in regards to this is I work primarily at this point with women, but it's the same for all right now. We're very busy. It's a society that demands a lot from us. And so this triangle that is body, mind, and soul that we normally really consider, you know, it needs to be balanced for us to be happy and centered, goes upside down. Take care of the job. We take care of the business. We take care of the kids, the family, whoever else needs us, the, you know, spiritual organization we're a part of, the neighborhood community, whatever. We're spread thin already with our own commitments and we have additional commitments that we take on. So this triangle went upside down. We're the least important thing. We have all these to-dos and we forgot to be a human being because we're very overwhelmed. And so this process of reversing diabetes holistically is kind of turning this triangle once again upside down to bring it to the ideal way that it should be body, mind, and soul all in balance. And so basically it takes a process of about three months of implementing this behavioral changes, lifestyle transformation, and committing, dedicating, and really being consistent with it in order to see some changes. If it was quick overnight, everybody will be doing it. It takes a little bit longer, but the results are going to be you know, outstanding for you because you're not going to need to be on medication and you can actually gain control of your health for the rest of your life versus having to be on medication. In reverse to what you said, Jim, um, the problem with medication is it works for a period of time. And usually after two checkups with a doctor, the doctor, if you haven't done any holistic plan to reverse it or to take control of your health, things are going to get worse every time you go. So you went today, they give you metmorphin. Next time you go, you might be okay. But the next time after that, if you haven't done anything on your own, most likely it's worse. So they ain't going to increase the doses. And if that doesn't work, they're going to give you an additional medication. I have a current client who's in five medications right now as we speak. And of course, she doesn't want to take the medication. But initially, you have to take the medication the doctor gave you due to the conditions that your body are in. But in the meantime, you can do a lot to reverse that damage, to stop the damage from accumulating. And it takes you taking control of your health and making those changes that we have been talking about. The holistic transformation is going to be from the inside out versus doctor giving you a medication from the outside in. Yeah, and that's that's got to be tough, though. I mean, three months of giving up my sugar and stuff <laughs> or bread, whatever it is. So I guess you're there as the coach. That's something you do as well, right? You can support people each week or every day, whatever. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cause people, I can see they would need that. Yeah. Well, we, the we thing Jim is that. if they get diagnosed diabetes uh, type two sugars are not going to be in their life forever. They put them, they put them in medication and they're not going to be able to eat sugar no matter what. You know, you're not supposed to eat sugar if you are diabetic type 2. So if you're able to reverse the condition, if you're pre-diabetic or you just got diagnosed, it is the best time to act. It's yeah. the best time. Losing a little bit of weight, ex you know, increasing exercise and making the changes. Okay. Um, so we need, to, yeah. we need to move on. Yeah, yeah let's questions. go. We have yep. a bunch of questions here. So let's go. Yep. To, thank go you. To Don, you're up. Oh, you're muted, Don. Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, great presentation. You you really hit everything exactly where it needs to be. And our company has done uh, built a platform that's a desktop and an app version that's white labeled. And we do exactly what you just described. We teach people how to eat, how to exercise, and we give them mental educational information as well as um, you know, the, the physical information that they need to accomplish what you described, but you hit everything spot on. Really nice presentation. Thank you, Don. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, Sharon. 
Well, hi there. Um, yes, I think all your recommendations are excellent for for diabetes and all that. But I'm wondering, for me, I'm a I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm a traditional naturopath, and I go all by symptoms and and all that. So. I think diabetes may in some instances be kind of caught up in this general umbrella of medical industrial complex. Then we had the cholesterol industrial complex and how valid some of these blood tests are, because I know for a fact that, you know, personally going to get a blood test, it, it creates a lot of stress because I have a major white coat syndrome and the needles and all that sort of thing. And the numbers come out terrible, but my diet is pretty pristine. I don't eat sugar and um, you know, I ate the proper fats and, and things like that. And you know, most of the test parameters were based on like 25 year old males, what their numbers should be. And even genetically, perhaps my genetic background is majority Finnish and maybe Finnish people need a lot of blood sugar in the morning so they can get out of the frozen hut and walk down to the river. And, you know, it could be a genetic predisposition and even doing intermittent fasting. So we, I think we just need to be careful of these numbers and not just, I think diagnosing based on just blood tests and not, you know, a, a total assessment of, of a person's health and their diet can be detrimental because then they put them on the metformin and that that just creates an ill you know then you become a patient you become an illness um patient and and if the if the diet doesn't work for them you know so this it becomes a circle so i think we really need to look at the individual and the diet and there are actually other holistic ways to check blood sugar levels like i have a refractometer and even uh, you know, tasting in the old days, they used to, the doctors would taste the urine for sugar. And, uh, you know, of course, <laughs> I'm sure that's not going to happen, but <laughs> there are other ways to find out. Uh, so yeah. I think we just need to really take the individual into account in their diet and not necessarily, you know, get into the numbers and the medication to determine whether someone is diabetic. That's right, Sharon. Um, when I got diagnosed, the first thing that I did is reach out to a holistic practitioner, a doctor, a friend of mine, Chinese doctor, and her name is Barbara Maddox. And she looked at my blood exams and she told me right away, my vitamin D was very low. And when you look at vitamin D, you go to Google and you put signs or characteristics or side effects of vitamin D being really low, prediabetes is one of the first ones that came up. Do you think the doctor stopped to think with me what in my blood exams could have an indication of diabetes in my body? They never did that. So the first thing that I did was a supplementation of vitamin D. And I live in Florida, so I went out in the sun, but um, it's completely overlooked by the health industry. At this point, I don't think that the traditional medicine is equipped to be able to do that. And I think that the information is completely outdated for traditional medicine because even the diabetes educators are telling people to, to eat 40 grams of carbohydrates in every meal. If you have four meals a day, that's 160 carbohydrates. It's a lot. It's a lot. We don't need as much. Right. It's based on misinformation and outdated information that we keep on spreading. I'm not sure if this has to do with pharma, not being interested in us healing or the industry of making money, uh, but really it's completely outdated and totally off. So if you go by what the doctor or the nurse told you when you get diagnosed, or they even send you to a diabetes educator, the guidelines are wrong. There's a mm -hmm. TED talk about this. Um, that if you want to reverse diabetes, the first thing you have to do is eliminate or disregard the, di the guidelines that they give you. Right. You need much less, you need much less carbohydrates than that way that they tell you to do. It's almost like they don't want you to heal from it, basically. Yeah, and it, and also we've been doing a lot of research into the vitamin D industrial complex. There's a, it's a 
steroid hormone and they're measuring just the storage form in all these blood tests. So I would recommend everyone do some more research into supplementation with vitamin D, especially if you live in Florida, you should never need to take a vitamin D supplement. So, um, I but it's also but, an easy fix, right? It was an easy fix. I did. Well, pharmaceutical. you're giving yourself mm -hmm. a, a hormone, you know, it's, yes. you're going to feel good if you take that. <laughs> it's a steroid hormone. So thank you, though. Thank you. This is a really necessary work to help people with diet. So thank My you. honor and pleasure. I feel like this is a mission that's calling me, not me calling the mission. So it's an honor to do what I do. And I hope to make a difference and touch many people's lives. I'm highly committed to it. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being here, Sharon. Too. Thank you. Pam uh, might have the answer to the vitamin D question as well or comment. So. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and, and thanks so much for the information. It's been uh, just uh, in lovely and interesting, and I appreciate the work that you do. Um, I, I am just wondering if you have looked into the impact on environmental toxins and how that impacts diabetes and blood sugars. And uh, especially since diabetes type one is up significantly in our country since 2020, which you know used to be like you were either born with it or you weren't. Uh, but now looking at uh, toxins that impact the pancreas and its inability to produce insulin. And then on the flip side, the toxins that are blocking insulin receptors in the body. Do you do much work with your patients in that regard? Yeah, I actually use to the best of my ability and I tell clients to do the same with organic products, what they eat and what they put in their skin. Many times we don't look at what we put on our skin as being loaded with chemicals. And about 20 years ago, I worked with a company that did organic line of cosmeceuticals and I learned, you know, that most people overlook that. But yeah, the environmental factors from cleaning products to what we eat and what we put on our skin, perfumes, all the chemicals we ladder ourselves with in the morning, every day we walk out the door, it's detrimental, you know? And um, I think that a lot of that is traditionally overlooked or dismissed as having an impact for a period of time. I didn't even use perfume. So personally, I follow holistic to the best of my extent financially and, you know, being able to keep up with everything, um, you know, but organic is always the best option. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. includes what we eat, what you put in your skin, all mm -hmm. the things, you know, and how you clean your house is included in that. Using candles is it's something that is proven to be not so great. So I stopped using so much, so much candles at home or made them, you know, natural ingredients but yes yeah, a very important thing that you're bringing up and i i'm reading constantly i educate myself i'm very very fascinated with understanding what are the things that we can do and reducing the load of chemicals definitely is all around something that will help because the body can heal better when it doesn't have yeah. this load of toxicity on top it really is Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the poor liver being strained in addition to the pancreas. Yeah. No, I, uh, we, we use um, a functional assessment uh, using 50,000 medical journals. So to your point, bringing it more current, uh, but also the textbooks and medical and physician textbooks from med school uh, put into a great big brain to help people really identify which nutrients are depleted, which toxins are impacting them from phthalates to PCBs, et cetera. Um, I'd love to talk with you a little bit more about how you might be able to use that and with your clients to just, we're all about just helping people and coaches like yourself get to the answer faster so that then you can bring that art of medicine and, and create better and faster healing. But I just really appreciate the information you brought today and, and creating that the triad of, of healing and, and helping people through it. So we'll, we'll talk more offline. It would be awesome. Happy, happy, happy to connect with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank your you. input too. Thank you, Pam. And uh, Charlie, you can we can make the connection between them later or something. And uh, as well as with Don's uh, product. Okay, so L.M. Carter, you are up. Okay, hi, everybody. Thank you. Natalie, first of all, everything you said, I have a holistic doctor that I go to at least once a year because, you know, they're expensive because they can't take insurance, blah, blah, blah. But I go once a year to have my blood work, but I also have a... Um, uh, internist, and I know we're, you know, coming to the end, but he is a specialist in African and Chinese traditional medicine. And so when he did my chart, when he did my blood work from a different organization, first of all, you're right. I had low vitamin D. Everything else you talked about, I just found that I had 
which is similar to what you have, which is, you know, pre-diabetes. And I mean, all this happened this week. So you were supposed to come into my life like today. <laughs> so that worked no out coincidences. Perfectly. But I, I say that because, you know, in terms of perfume and lotions and things, I stopped a long time ago. I used coconut oil, organic coconut oil. Uh, I The young lady talked about individual. I think that's important. I was not a sweets person. I'm still not. I probably ate more sweets since I've been married to my husband than I ever ate in my life because we didn't have any money. So it worked out perfectly. Uh, and I still don't eat a lot of carbs. I like green vegetables. That's what I like. But I found out my aunts in their 80s, so my mom died when I was 19, that they started getting diabetes in the 80s, but they were no longer doing the physical stuff. I'll be 70 years old and I usually walk maybe during a week because uh, I don't, you know, because of COVID, I don't go in small places, but I'm walking maybe three miles, three days a week. And on the weekends, I walk 10 miles. For my 65th, I did six, 20 miles for my 65th birthday. That was a present to me. So it's not like I'm not, you know, exercising. I drink a lot of water, but uh, during COVID, I was probably the healthiest <laughs> I've been in a long time because I was was cooking, you know, I was making my beans and I have a crazy schedule, but I'm going to get back to my beans. That's my beans and green vegetables are my primary. So the timing of this was perfect. I wasn't going to get on, then I got on late and I heard you doing everything you were saying. It's like, I'm right in the middle of that, literally just coming with that. Um, and everything everyone else has said has been right on time because my husband has had diabetes for a long time. But he used to eat cakes and stuff like that wasn't my thing. I'm a salt person, but I'm not salt sensitive. So anyway, I, you know, first of all, I want to thank you. Um, second, everything you said. And so I kind of heard you say something about coaching later on. Um, if you could just, yes. I guess, information. And I wanted to know whether or not this was going to, if there was tape, would that be available? Because, you know, I kind of caught it late and I'm sure others would want to go back and um, you know, if all possible, I'll touch base and figure out how we could do this, put it in my schedule because I'm I, I really the other thing you said that was most important in terms of how to get off the sugar. You know, I drink a lot of teas and I eat a lot of nuts, but how to get off the sugar in three days, which shouldn't be a problem with me, my husband, it may be a problem. Um, and then the other part, my doctor said exactly what you said. He called he gave me this protocol and said, come back in three to four months. So you're you're like perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I, I I just took a shot like I had time and decided I would just get on, even though I don't have the time, but it was worth it and everything was perfect. So I appreciate you guys having this. I'm going to share it with all my friends because um, I think, you know, and somebody said this too, the last speaker before I came on, looking at the food, the soil, the water, all the stuff that's in there. And I just want to leave a note in case you guys may know, but I just heard that um, the Mike, Bill Gates and them have Going back to organic, they have uh, funded this chemical to put on organic vegetables that you cannot wash off. So some of you may want to take a look at it. Organic, in other words, it goes to money. If it's perishable and it's not going to last, they can't make money. You have to throw it away. So I just heard that this week that they have a product that's being put on organic fruits and vegetables that cannot be washed off. And I know from Dick Gregory, you could use hydrogen peroxide to clean off pesticides, right? Or salt water to clean off pesticides, but this stuff cannot be cleaned off. So hopefully, oh, that's it. I see somebody put it in. Franken preservatives for supermarket veggies and fruits. Clearly that's about money, no matter what. So it makes you think maybe I should just go back to conventional, but then you have the GMO. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You clearly were meant to be here. Sometimes I call them coincidences, not coincidences. Yep. You were meant to be here. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, it. You. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Last hour, we're at the top of the hour, like out of time. But Nicole, I see you're, you're the, our last question person. Oh, thank you. And thank you so much, Natalia. I really appreciate your information. I'll try to be really quick and get it out there. A uh, long time borderline diabetes struggler, two gestational diabetes in, in two of my three pregnancies. I'm very underweight, actually. I'm, I'm 125 pounds and 5'7". I work out seven days a week, very active. Mm -hmm. So I buy all the odds. Um, but either way, I'm sitting constantly at 5.6 A1C. So I, at this point, my, my major questions for you are in that three days and the three months, when you say to cut the sugars, are you just speaking of the refined sugars and the simple carbs, or are you actually going to the extreme and doing like no rice, no milk, no, no alcohol, nothing that can turn into a sugar? 
Yes, all carbohydrates are sugar, the same thing because they break down into sugar. So I cut all of that, potatoes and rice and pasta and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. And then, and that's for the three days or do you maintain that normally as well where you, you keep, I mean, are you basically eating no carbs or just complex carbs? Any vegetable that you eat is carbs. We just eliminate all the added sugar that, you know, all the other bread and pasta and rice and all that stuff. Vegetables are going to have carbohydrates. They're not free of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. but you're going to have more wholesome foods and less of the other additives and stuff that is chemically, clean, you know, man-made. So going to regular food like we used to eat back in the day, you know. Okay, so you still do fruits and things, just none of the actual, okay, processed stuff. Yeah, I teach people how to eat so that the sugar doesn't have as much of an impact and balancing it with protein and healthy fats is the way to go. Uh, sometimes you can have some, but it depends on the personal basis. So um, somebody had asked about the coaching. I'm doing a free class on Saturday at 11 a.m. And I think Jim is going to put the link in the chat for whoever wants to participate is free of charge and it's the purpose of it is to educate to share and if somebody's interested in working long term then the information will be provided there but it's a chance for you to get to know me and the way I work with people and kind of ask your questions as well uh, and it's highly educational I'm committed that it makes the difference with whoever shows up whether they participate long term or not oh excellent well thank you so much I really appreciate the information my pleasure Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Okay. We are kind of wrapping up here. How can, with the last question, how can people reach you and or follow you? Website, social media. Uh, we see, yes. And in the chat, everybody, the very first um, uh, entry is the uh, link for the Saturday's events, right? Mm -hmm. So beyond that how can people reach you and follow you so whatever? i am very active in facebook i have a group that is called reverse uh, pre-diabetes and diabetes type 2 holistically so if you search it in groups in facebook you're going to find me there i'm also in instagram under reverse diabetes holistically uh and i'm in linkedin as my name natalia schifini um, you can send me a message in any of those, you know, social media channels. And my email is wellness Yoda, Y O D A wellness Yoda at iCloud.com. So if you want to send me a private message, asking me questions, speaking my brain, asking feedback, I'm more than happy to connect with you offline and reach out to me whenever you're ready to talk.